Hey everyone, so in this episode we're going to be adding uh, authentication to our application and uh, seeding in an admin account so only the admin can manage posts and the uh, visiting users will just be able to view them and I won't be able to edit them. So first of all let's go into our startup, let's go into our services and add default identity and identity user okay and then let's add roles identity role cool and then add entity framework stores and we use our our db context so what this does is right it tells it right a default identity model so this is the user model. So if we go in there and we see where the inherits from, we can see all this stuff, right? Well, basically all the properties that it has. And same for the side uh, role. A role basically means what role the user has. Is, it, is he an admin? Is he a manager? Is he just a normal user? Is he uh, just an employee? You know, like it, it just basically specifies uh, the authority of uh, the user and uh, the entity framework stores just basically says right store it in this uh, db context so let's go into our app, app db context and instead of the db context that we inherit from we want to inherit from identity db context import want to import the, uh, the namespace for it and all this basically does is how we create a table a DB set for posts. This has a DB set for all types of like uh, tables needed for identity user and identity role to function. All right, so that's taken care of. In our app, we want to use and not not identity use authentication. So basically, just going to say right, we are using authentication. This is going to allow. Uh, this is going to set up all the cookie metal middleware and all that. Uh, you don't have to worry about it. What what it really does, it just works. This is how you set up authentication in uh, .NET Core. So we wanna we want to create the migrations. So .NET EF um, migrations add identity tables. Do -do -do. And .NET EF database update. Okay, hopefully let's inspect the migration, right? So let's refresh. Okay, so now we can see all these tables created. So claims, roles, uh, don't worry about this stuff. Uh, you'll come to know this later on and you'll be more familiar with it right now you don't need to bother yourself with you don't need to stuff your mind with this information just know that it handles authentication right so we have the authentication and we have the model now we want to seed the admin user to do this we go into our program.cs Okay, so in here we want to split um, the the creation of our the creation and running of our web application into two parts. The first one is where we build it, and the second one is where we actually run it. Okay, so <clears throat> right now we have the this part where it sort of, sort of bundles up the application and all the parts of it sort of ready to go. And at this point, they'll be ready to run. So what we want to do is we want to get the middleware services that we are implementing here through dependency injection. So host.services, create scope, and... Oops, 
it's a function, right? So you'll have to import Microsoft extensions dependency injection. So what this will do is at the moment, uh, at, at this point, our, de our dependencies, they kind of linger around, same as our code. You know, we have all these options to write functions and stuff, but if we don't actually write them into a scope, like a function or a statement, you know, there is no, they don't do anything. So we create a scope. And from the scope, we want to extract a few things. So first, actually, let's make it short, CTX. We want our, um, <clears throat> we want our database context. So service provider and get required service. And then here, let's say, app db context boom all right and let's copy this a few times so instead of app db context now we want user manager and it, the the model for that will be identity user since that's what we registered here and let's call this user manager and this one will be role manager. So role manager and identity role. Okay, so we got our database context, we got our user manager. The user manager handles all the accounts, all the user accounts and role manager handles all the roles that you can assign to users. So we got our stuff. Now we want to see the database. So first we want to ensure that the database is created. So if it's if the database not there, we're not going to be able to do this. So it's going to just apply the latest migrations just in case. <clears throat> so now Let's make an if statement and if ctx uh, roles dot any. Oh. So if there aren't any in roles, create a role. All right, sorry, I need the link. Eh, forget about that. All right, so that's another if statement. Same for user users and any but here we just want to say that we just want to find the admin user so if username equals admin so if the if the admin doesn't exist create an admin okay so admin role Let's create an admin role, which is going to be new identity role and the constructor for it. Here's one. It accepts a role name. So let's pass it in and we'll call it admin. Now let's go to our role manager and create a sync. Okay, so in here, let's pass our admin role okay so this is asynchronous but our main method is not asynchronous so we cannot call await okay it's gonna like highlight it and it's like syntax error so what we can do is we can get the awaiter <clears throat> and we can get the result right so get a waiter will be equals to putting await in front of it and and get a result will be equals to getting the result. Okay, so we have the result here, and we're basically adding a role. So let's go ahead and do the same for our user manager. So admin user equals new identity user. <coughs> Sorry, I forgot variable here. So username, we want to give it the same 
as here admin and uh, sometimes uh, it will use the email as the login so just to make sure admin at uh, let's give it test.com admin at test.com all right uh, so this is our user let's put these comments up here so we can <coughs> see it better okay so let me just All right, so here's our admin user. Same as before, we want to use the user manager for this to create a user. All right, and if we look at the overloads for this, we have create async and create async, which takes a password. So let's go ahead and a password just a password okay so next thing is we want to add a role so let's say add role to user um add to role async right and admin user and we want to specify the name for the role all right you probably don't want to type in the role since if you want to change the name of the role you'd have to change it into um in two places so take admin role and name okay so let's copy the get awaiter and results since these both are async we'll need them here as well okay so this should be good except for one problem is this password right here from the beginning uh, identity specifies that it has to require a big letter and a special character and a decimal and it has to be a certain length so I don't want that and I'm gonna show you how to configure it because you probably want your own password so here in our services where we add our default identity we wanna add options So in our options, we want to go to password, and here you have all kinds of, so required digit, false, oh, I'm just going to set it to the very basic, so I can pretty much get any password. So require unique characters, false, I don't want any, uh, oh wait, no, that's not the one. Require non-alphanumeric, require uppercase, false. Uh, require length and here let's put six so now we don't need any digits we don't need any alphanumerical characters not alphanumericals so digit is a number alphanumeric is like a special character uh, like a pound sign dollar sign whatever bracket require uppercase so just an uppercase and the require length is this is basically how you configure your password. So let's go back into our post password and this should now be good. Now, if for some reason uh, it doesn't work, you can do this and put a breakpoint here and see what's in the result. So we're gonna keep this result here and see just in case this breaks. Um, and we wanna wrap the whole thing in a try catch statement since this is our sort of starting point and if anything here breaks if it's not going to run at all all right so we want to at least be able to run the application if it doesn't work if it doesn't is if it isn't able to see okay so let's um use the message because my, so if it breaks we want to see it okay looking good I don't think I forgot anything let's run it see what happens oh, quickly put a breakpoint here
By the way, if you're trying to debug and it doesn't debug for some reason, you need to have this option here selected to debug. If you have it selected to release, that no break, it's not gonna break any. It's not gonna like hit any breakpoints because it compiles it to a different code. Okay, so let's step this through. We get our context. We get our user manager. We get our role manager. We ensure the database is created. Good. Admin role. Here's our admin role. You can expect it. All the stuff that's in there. We don't have any, and we create it now. At this point, the role manager has created it. So let's go into our database and let's see if it's already written. And it is. And let's see if the user is written. Nope. And if we go into this table, ASP.NET user roles, let's view it. Nothing's here yet. Okay, so let's keep going. F10 to keep stepping. Okay. Okay, so see the result succeeded good let's see our users table refresh it here is our user and you'll see nothing's here yet so this is basically a link between the role and the users and just want to show you the power of uh, entity framework uh, no, no, identity you can see this big hash that you basically you as the creator you will never know any of the user passwords unless you implement some kind of function functionality to catch those passwords so you can see them but that will be that will be not what you want to do at all let's continue running this and let's refresh this table and you can see that our user role user id points to this user role and now we have a link between our admin account and our admin role Okay, so let's carry on to our application. Press F5. Boom, application runs. <clears throat> All right, so let's close this. At this point, we have created a bunch of tables to hold, inform hold information about our user. And we have seeded our database with, uh, what's it called, uh, with an admin account. So in the next episode, we are going to implement an admin controller, and we're going to move all our functionality for the blog posts to our admin controller. Uh, but for now, thanks for watching, and uh, hopefully you're enjoying these tutorials. Uh, if you do, give it a like, subscribe for more. I'm going to be putting out loads more videos, including a more intermediate tutorial where we're going to build a shop, and but that's, sh that's for the future. All right. It's a secret. You didn't see me hear me say it. Um, but yeah, if you have any questions, leave them in the comments. I will answer all of your questions. Uh, but for now, see you in the next video.